Let's start with uh, the, the, the amount of supply you're seeing coming to market. Typically, you tell us, other investors tell us that September is a very strong month for this, but some investors tactically had to raise money a little bit earlier on this year, I suppose. So have we seen some of the supply you might normally see in September sort of cannibalised during the summer? I think we have. Uh, good morning. I, th I think we have indeed. I mean, if, if you look at the U.S. high yield market, August was a phenomenal month for supply. And, and August, uh, you know, traditionally is very quiet. We normally have about $12 billion in U.S. high yield in the month of August. In, in, in the month just gone, we had $52 billion, which is, is a record for that month uh, compared to, to that month in any other year. The second biggest supply month that we've ever had in, in U.S. high yield after June of this year. So we've had a lot of supply coming into the market across the piece, not just in high yield, but in investment grade as well. And, and a lot of that came through, as you say, in, in the earlier parts of the year, um, even against uh, sort of the backdrop of, of volatility. Um, I think that uh, certain companies, a lot of companies were encouraged by the all-in cost of, of debt. They, they had access to the market in a period of uncertainty. And what they really wanted to build was a cash buffer to see them through some of the economic uncertainty that, 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 that we're seeing now. So all of those things came together that meant that we had a phenomenal uh, sort of Q1 and Q2 from a supply perspective uh, and, and indeed a busy August as well. So companies knew they had to pile up those cash buffers. Investors were busy screening companies for the for the strength of their balance sheet and the amount of cash they were holding, Colin. So does that mean you just sort of what is the strategy through all of this then? Is it just to is it to go long of of credit in general? Or do you I, I assume you have to be more granular, even though you have central banks stepping in to keep rates low across the across the spectrum for, for credit? Yes, I mean, I think that's right. I mean, we have got a, an overweight bias to, to fixed income, which is, is primarily expressed through credit. And you mentioned the, the fundamentals. We look at balance sheets, we look at income statements, we look at cash flow, and, and really we've got to be focused on that at this point in time. What we know is that the, the macro backdrop, uh, you know, it might be recovering slightly. We don't know the pace of that uh, exactly, but we do know that it's going to be a fairly weak year overall. We know that growth will probably be around about 3% negative for the year. So it's not a market where you just want to, to buy an index and hold it, because I think that you, you, you do have areas of value there. You do have areas, we like investment grade, for example, where, you know, given the sort of weak macro, you want to be up the quality curve. But overall, we think that the risk reward looks OK there. You've also got direct buying by central banks. So if, if there is a period of weakness, I think that is capped. Um, but even within investment grade, there's certain areas that we think make a bit more sense, sort of looking at more non-cyclical names, so tech, healthcare, some of the supermarkets. Uh, we, we like banks as well. Um, so we like these names where, you know, we think that we've got a good a degree of visibility on their cash flows and on their earnings. Um, and, and for the same reason, uh, you know, we're sort of still relatively cautious in those more cyclical areas, uh, sort of retail, lodging and leisure, to, to give some examples. Mm, so that's, that's the sector, that, those are the sector picks. Just thinking broadly about how the recovery in the global economy fits with the credit cycle, Colin, uh, normally we'd be talking about recovery from, uh, from, from perhaps a more sustained downturn. This has been a very quick, sharp downturn, and now we do have a lot of conversations about recovery and whether it'll be V-shaped or W-shaped, perhaps we don't know yet. But how does that play into credit markets? Because we might still have you know, peaks in unemployment ahead or trouble for consumers ahead if unemployment does peak. Mm -hmm. So how are you uh, working your way through all those sort of conflicting macro signals? Yeah, and, 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 and it is difficult. And I think the, the key, as I, as I mentioned, is you've got to, we, we feel we've got to have visibility on these earnings before we're, we're willing to, to take risk in a name. And I think that's really important. So that involves sort of looking through the fundamentals of the name. I mean, I think at a fairly high level, as I, as I say, with central banks, you know, the Fed, the ECB, they're directly buying corporate bonds in the investment grade space. I think that does give us some confidence in, in, in that area. I think high yield is a slightly different picture. You've got a lot more sensitivity to that economic recovery. So what we're really thinking about is where should we be taking risk now? 
whilst we're trying to identify the speed of that recovery and where are we still relatively cautious? Because you know, we're, we're looking at defaults increasing uh, going forward. Uh, they've been, you know, actually fairly controlled. Maybe really only in the retail and energy space have we seen defaults coming through uh, w w within the high yield space. But you know, our view is that they will tick up probably closer to to an eight percent rate uh, on a sort of twelve month forward view. Uh, and, and so it's important to to identify where you think these risks are, and indeed where you see the opportunities in the market. So it's it's trying to just overlay that macro picture with some of the sector and, and individual name fundamentals to identify which names we think are going to be okay, which names are going to come through this period. And if, as you say, there is a further downturn that comes through, which you know we, 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 nobody has visibility off at this point, who's got the, the cash flow strength, who's got the liquidity to see through any potential market volatility?